Hi everyone, my name is Mukesh Chintra. You might have known me from my uh, YouTube video lectures on CCNA operating systems and cryptography subjects. I am coming up with this video to provide a few suggestions or you might even call them as tips based on my previous experience of 15 years in teaching field and I thought this video is going to be beneficial specifically for the students who are at the starting point of their academic careers like first year, second year, BE, BTEC, BSc and other degree courses. Without much delay, let me go right into it. The first and foremost important decision I would like to make is all the students please do create a professional email. You might ask me, sir, we already have an email. Why are you talking about a professional email? Define a professional email. I don't have a specific definition for that, but professional email is something which should be small. It should not be too lengthy or too funky because email is the most important point of communication that will be made from you to in throughout your entire career, which includes internships, placements and further also. So having a good email is a must. I don't want to see a lengthy email which is more than 20 characters or 25 characters. The best length for a professional email is maybe between 10 to 20. It is an optimum size and don't include any pet names or other funky names or your uh, childhood names, etc. It should be small, it should be simple and maybe it should be able to be relate to yourself. Okay. And second important uh, observation I made regarding emails is because it's free, the students tend to create a lot of emails and it's not at all a good idea to have multiple emails because I do have instances where the students forgot which email they gave for a particular placement company and they don't even open to see when the interview date is. So please cut out all those things, create only one professional email, stick it up to the point where it is small and easy to remember and you have to use it for each and everything. So I reiterate my first session create a professional email leave the rest while you might have other emails also if it is good enough do use it okay my second suggestion for all of you is create an account on linkedin i know that students are very active in the social media they use facebook instagram snapchat etc etc but linkedin is a great place which is currently the largest professional network on the internet it is the right place where you can build professional relationships with your peers. You can connect and network with them. In simpler terms, it acts or it serves like an online resume or portfolio, which enables the users like the students to showcase their abilities, work experiences, accomplishments and whatnot so that the employers can get a good look at them and it gives you great opportunities to find the right internship or the right job. Myself do suggest uh, my, all my students to while they are preparing their resume to add the LinkedIn profile IDs in place of their or after their email IDs. So that when they go for scrutiny, I can simply click on their LinkedIn profile and I can see what kind of skills they have, what kind of certifications they do, what kind of education they had. And adding to the first session, the email id which you create in the first like the professional email ID which i suggested that please use that email id to create your linkedin account and this linkedin account on the same email id can be linked up with your other certifications like the netacad you can watch my video on netacad to get a better idea how to link the certifications or the badges to linkedin skills profiles so create a professional email id and then create a linkedin account from here onwards whatever uh, uh, certifications you do or whatever accomplishments you have always make it a habit of posting them in the linkedin profile your profile keeps building up and by the time you get ready for your third year or final year placements your linkedin profile is going to be a, a huge bonus like your resume my third session for all of you is create an account on online coding platforms like hacker earth hacker rank code chef lead code etc now if you are wondering uh, why should i be bothered about coding i'm already studying programming subjects right now coding has become an essential skill in 21st century 
it is now being taught at schools from 8th standard onwards. So irrespective whether you belong to computer science department or not or any other allied branches, understanding and learning coding is a must. Now know how to code and how to showcase yourself has become a vital point. Students who work on these coding platforms do get an opportunity to showcase their skills and because this is open globally, you are competing, you are actually competing with students worldwide. It also gives you a reality check what kind of skills you are, where you are lagging and what you should do to improve the efficiency. The best thing about having uh, accounts on these platforms and working on these platforms is, th is simple. Most of the prominent companies like Facebook, uh, Twitter, Google, Amazon, Adobe, etc., whatnot, a lot of these companies are now recruiting Indian students not by directly coming to the colleges or from traditional avenues of placement, but they are recruiting directly from the leaderboards of such platforms and also through hackathons and other coding competitions they organize through these platforms. So even though you are in your starting years like first year or second year, create the free accounts, try to see where it will take you, start from scratch, start from the starting point. It's just like playing a game. Now once you, once you want to play a game along with your friends, as long as you play, you keep your uh, increasing the levels and you boast about your levels, you say that I got so many points, I am top one on the leaderboard, etc, etc. With the same zeal and jest, I want all the students to do to solve the coding examples, to solve the coding challenges on these platforms and gain more and more experience with these platforms. Last but not the least of my suggestions is, there are many competitions that are being organized by the industry, academic uh, institutions, etc. like hackathons, codeathons, ideathons, uh, paper presentations, poster presentations, there are many names. I want all of you to go and participate. Irrespective to you win or lose, just go out there. Get realistic experience by participating in these events. I have many students who say, sir, I am first year, I am only second year, I don't know many of the technologies, can I compete? Last year in SIH, which is the Smart India Hackathon organized by our uh, government annually, a second year student team has won 1 lakh rupees for a particular idea. It's not how much technology you learned or how much CGPA you have. It is thinking, it is like how much, how innovative can you think? Out of the box thinking. So just go out there, at least try to get experience. See how your students are doing. And I also, one uh, most common complaint that I get is, sir, we don't know much. I don't have studied. I don't have very good knowledge. But please remember the fact that the people who you are competing against are also students. They are not professors. They don't have huge years of many years of experience. It is a way of building confidence. Go to hackathons, get your idea, see where you are. If you don't win a prize, check out who has won the prize and what is the primary difference between that model and your model. So with these things, if you go out, you get to meet other people, you can understand what other technologies are being used by your peers, or how good they are, where, how different, how many different ways can you improve yourself, where you are lagging, all these things, these cannot be learned by sitting in a classroom. You have to go out in the real world, see and participate and compete. So evaluate yourself and your abilities so that you can come, you can gain experience and try to be better. Okay, so these are my four suggestions. And once again, create a professional email ID, create a LinkedIn account, create accounts on uh, coding platforms, participate in events. The, the one more important thing that plays a crucial role uh, in your academic career is projects. So do, so once you do all these things, you get that out of box thinking and maybe a good project is always a very handy to have when you go for an interview. My suggestions that these four suggestions would uh, benefit you and would help you to plan your career better. And my main objective in making this video is by the time you prepare your resume and get ready for internships and placements during your third or final years, you should have a solid background of credentials and your resume should be distinctive.
employers should be able to easily distinguish between your resume and hundreds and lakhs of people out there doing the same course. So thank you very much and all the best.